Yo guys, it's Larry. You already know that today I'm bringing you guys my battle for week 7 of the season 4 of the Pokemon Premier League. This week we are taking on Shroom Raver and the Parasect Germain. And this battle is up late. Uh, like really late. I had this battle uh, 9 days ago and I'm recording it now. So that's how long it's been. Um, the reason why is because I spent last week sick, basically. I was having some issues with my jaw and my mouth, which made it hard to talk. Uh, and talking is pretty important when you're recording. So that's, that's, that, that happened. Um, thankfully there was a week break in the PPL anyway. Um, all the Europe peoples went off to EGX. Uh, I think they're basically home now, but, uh, they, they went off to EGX. This was supposed, like, this would have been the week of week eight. However, week eight is postponed to next week because, um, EGX and stuff, so uh, we're not really that far behind because next week, week 8, we'll go up and everything will be back to normal. But this battle, uh, yeah, it's up a little bit late. Also, <clears throat> like I said, I did have this battle like 9 days ago, so if I don't remember every little thing about this battle, I do apologize. I haven't gone back and looked at every little detail, so I can explain every little thing. Um, so I'm just going to give you guys the heads up that this might not me be the best, uh, most accurate uh, commentary that, that you've ever seen in your life. But I'm going to do the be my best. So, Shroom is someone that we want to beat because uh, we have a bit of a personal personal rivalry with him. Uh, we beat him for the first time last season, and uh, it was glorious. And we would like to do that again. However, he is in the last place, uh, which is very unfortunate for him. So, he kind of needs some wins, but... And we just kind of need to, I don't know, exist. We're like 3-3 three and three coming into this game, so, I mean, it doesn't really matter what happens with us. <laughs> Uh, we're kind of fine regardless. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about my team. Team Builder was uploaded a couple days ago. So I'll try to remember to link that in the description if you want the full explanation. Because that was done when I actually remembered why I brought everything. Um, quick rundown. I actually don't remember what the Reuniclus was. I believe it's physically defensive. Uh, with Protect and like Psychic and like Focus Blast and something else. Uh, especially defensive Togekiss uh, for the Greninja. Um... To, oh, the Togekiss also has Nasty Plot, I believe. Like a Nasty Plot Roost, uh, Dazzling Gleam, Air Slash. Uh, Scarfed Tentacruel, because that's fun. Uh, Scolipede, uh, which is new. Uh, we got that in a transfer. I dropped Breloom, Glaceon, and Ariados to get Scolipede, if you want to hear all the details about that. That was explained in more detail uh, in the team builder. So we have a Scolipede on our team now. Uh, that is like Protect. It's like a Focus or a Muscle Band. Uh, protect, Baton Pass, Earthquake, and x -Scissor, I believe. Physically Defensive, Mega Steelix, uh, Stealth Rocks, Dragon Tail, same old, same old that I kind of always bring it, and a Scarfed Physical Victini. Uh, yeah. Shroom decided to bring the Greninja, Hippodon, Hitmontop, Tyrantrum, Excadrill, and Electros. So, looking like he could be bringing Sand, uh, so that's pretty scary. He did bring the Tyrantrum, which I wasn't sure was coming, um, but Mega Steelix can really just stop it from doing things. So, sh hopefully, you know, heading into this match, I'm thinking that it's not too big of an issue, uh, and all that other stuff. So, let's go ahead and just start playing the match. <clears throat> um, there also was a DC the first time that we played through, and I believe that there is a turn in this that uh, we make up for that uh, by doing something. Uh, so we'll get to that, but there was a DC, so some of these are recreated, but it's not that many turns. I started off with the Re Reuniclus, I thought I had a good chance against everything. He started off with the Electros, and he did knock off, which sucks. I actually needed the Leftovers uh, pretty bad, but I am Regenerator, so I know I'll get my health back that way, but um, I wanted to be able to use the Leftovers to possibly be able to take a hit from Excadrill, like switch in and stuff like that. Um, but he full switches into the Greninja, and if I would have hit Focus Blast there, that would have been glorious, but I was too scared. I don't know, I should have hit Focus Blast if I was going to attack, but, you know, I was too scared. Um, but he went for U-Turn, and uh, I went to Togekiss, so this is my switch into the Greninja. Um, the only thing that can do KO the Togekiss is a physically offensive gunk shot um, Greninja, so I'm assuming that he's not that, but you never know. Uh, he goes just right back into the Electros. I'm thinking he's probably just going to Volt Switch out again, but I, you know, didn't want to risk the Mega Steelix in case he went for this. Flamethrower! 
Um, yeah. So that wouldn't have been super good, especially since the Mega Steelix is not Mega yet. Uh, so now I decide to go in to Victini because he was either going to Volt Switch or he's going to try and Flamethrower again. Um, Flamethrower was looking like the more likely scenario thing. Um, and I have a Scarf Victini in, and he doesn't have like a lot of switch ins, but this is a switch in. Um, so that sucks. I don't have a lot of switch ins to pout on. I didn't really bring a lot of ways to deal with it. Um, and I'm kind of super realizing this now at this point in the battle. Um, I switch out, I forget if I just didn't have U-turn or if I just didn't find it worth it um, to go for it. Uh, I just went into the Mega Steelix and uh, I take an Earthquake, which I can take, uh, not too bad. Um, I didn't think he was going to stay in, but I didn't know, um, but he does stay in and he goes for the Stealth Rocks. As I think I get up my rocks this turn also. Yeah. Um, this next turn, I thought he was going to switch out and I went for the Dragon Tail. Uh, but I actually missed a Dragon Tail. So I actually missed a Dragon Tail this turn. Uh, he said he doesn't go for Earthquake. I went for the Dragon Tail, but I missed. Um, because this is a recreation, uh, in order to recreate the missing of the Dragon Tail, I just went for a second Stealth Rocks. But that was Dragon Tail there. Um, just so you know, but I missed. Uh, but he didn't switch out anyway, so that kind of ruined anything. I switched out as he goes for Toxic, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, because I actually thought about staying in and just getting damage off on this thing and then just letting the Steelix die, but um, I figured I could save the Steelix for Death Fodder uh, later, and you know how it is. But now that Togekiss is Toxic, the Witch does kind of suck because this is, it's going to be harder to 1v1 the Greninja, um, but he is going to go into Electros, probably should have seen that one coming, but I go for the Nasty Plot. And Dazzling Gleam is, like, not quite at the range of Fuse Assault Vest, which I'm pretty sure he is at this point. It's not quite going to take him out, um, which is really unfortunate. But uh, I make him at least scared a little bit. Uh, I probably should have went for the Dazzling Gleam, or I should have just switched out. Uh, instead, I went for Roost, predicting him to go for Volt Switch. I'll get rid of my Flying type. It won't be a super effective hit. But then he gets free Switch Initiative into anything that's faster and can threaten me out, a.k.a. Excadrill or like Tyrantrum. So that's what happens. Um, but he goes into Hippowdon, so I was like, oh, okay. Um, but now it's up to me if I want to get damage on this thing or if I want to save this for later. Um, Greninja is still around, so I do believe that I actually save this for later. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Let's just, come on, all the stuff. <laughs> There's lots of stuff. Um, but he is going to switch out, um, so I didn't switch out. Okay, he switched out into that thing as I went for the Air Slash. I think I was just going for damage and possibly a flinch, um, but he takes that very nicely. Um, and I believe I could knock him out with another one or I could go for a Dazz and Gleam. I feel like I do kill him here. Um, because why not? No. I could have killed him, but then toxic damage would just rack up so much um, that it would not be super fun. So I guess that's why I decided to switch out. Uh, he just both switches, and then he gets to go and have his free switch initiative again. So this is not looking super good for me. Uh, and then there's Hexadrill. That's looking really not good for me. Um, because I don't have a switch into Exodrill, that was the whole point of my team, is that it didn't have a switch into Exodrill, but I wanted everything to be able to, to be able to somewhat deal with it. Um, so yeah, I just decided to sack off the Mega Steelix here, uh, because, I mean, I need to do something to this Exodrill, and I figured that Reuniclus was a little bit more, uh, important than this thing was. We do find out that he's Life Orb, so, uh, that makes me think that he is like a Sword Stance, Life Orb, Sand Rush set, so that's not fun, um, but he takes out the Mega Steelix, like I said, I was sacking it there, and um, now we have to uh, do something, oh, well, the Sandstorm subsided, Sandstorm subsided, so now I know I can outspeed him with my um, scarfed stuff, so that's what I decided to do, uh, he does switch out, um, and I mean, I knew he wasn't scarfed anyway, so he doesn't know I'm scarfed yet, but, you know. 
it is what it is. I go for the V crate and he just sacks off the Electros. So Victini is going to get up another kill. Victini is actually getting quite a few kills this season. I believe that is its ninth kill on the season. I don't know. It does lead the team in kills. So, um, very, very happy with how Victini is doing this season. And he sends out Tyrantra, which wouldn't be an issue if I had that Mega Steelix around. Remember, the Mega Steelix can deal with any sort of Tyrantrum. He would need up like three, four Dragon Dances. You know, before it could, uh, maybe like two or three to two it KO me with Earthquake, but, you know, at that point I'd be able to switch in, go for an Earthquake, whatever. Um, but he goes for a sub as I was basically sacking off the Togekiss, and I'm like, oh boy, this is not fun. Uh, and so he's behind a substitute, and I know he's Dragon Dance, and I'm just like, I don't know what to do, but he goes for the Dragon Dance, I just, I have to break the sub. Um, so maybe if I can live with something, or I have two Scarfers that can outspeed, um, you know, in tandem. I'll have to sack off one to be able to kill him with the other. Uh, but that's what it's looking like it's gonna have to be right now. And, um, yeah. So he's gonna end up killing here, and, um, I'm just gonna start talking about the next play. So he kills Togekiss here with a head smash. And, um, I can either go into my Scarf Tentacruel or my Scarf Victini. Uh, Victini can't do much damage to him, though, unfortunately. Um, I think the most I can do is like 40 to 50% uh, with reversal after like rock damage and stuff like that. Uh, but it might not even be that low in the range. I couldn't get a quite an accurate calc. So I just decided to go into Tentacruel because there's a chance that I could go for a Scald. He'll be down at like 10%. He'll live this and then maybe I can get a burn or something. But we crit the Tyrantrum. This crit mattered 100% with 0 HP. A max roll did like 61% and he was at a clean like 70% there. Or 65%, and um, yeah. So that crit really mattered. Tyrantrum would have been able to put such a hole in my team, and um, we just kind of knock it out. Then he comes into Hippowdon, which I was a little not sure about. But I go for the Scald. If we got a burn, we would have been able to live this Earthquake and get off another Scald, uh, which would have been good. But we don't get the burn, and he goes for the Earthquake, and, uh, and he kills me. But um, that skull damage is really important because now that I'm looking at it, I'm, I'm really seeing that I can actually win this game now. Because uh, Tyrantrum is gone, I uh, the skull bead uh, can really do damage. So, um, now that I think about it, I don't know like what all would happen if like the Tyrantrum did kill the Tentacle there. Because he would have had like no health and... Um, I don't know. I, like, I'd still be able to outspeed with Bikini, and then I'd either force him out or, you know, it's actually kind of hard to say how the game uh, would have ended uh, if that wouldn't happen. But he goes into hit on top, and um, he gets off a sucker punch as I end up um, taking him down with Psychic. So that is just going to be a nice dead hit on top. Uh, didn't really do that much, so was cool with that. And now. He is going to go into the Excadrill, uh, which is fine, and I'm going to go for the Protect to uh, waste some sand turns. So I didn't get to use the Protect to help me live a hit from Excadrill, but I was able to use it to help uh, take out sand, sand turns. If I had more than 10 health, I would have went for a double Protect here to try and stall out more, but the sand would have killed me that turn anyway, uh, even if I got it off, so it didn't. It wouldn't have mattered. So, um, well, I guess it subsided, so maybe it wouldn't have killed me, so... Either way, it would have just delayed the battle for no reason. Uh, now that I know that I'm faster than I am, uh, I can win the game. So... <laughs> he switches out. I have a Skullipede, and because of that damage that Tentacle was able to do hit Poudon earlier, um... I am able to... do, uh, do this. So... I'm gonna go ahead and go for the Earthquake. And um, now another one will be able to take him out. I have no reason not to go to for an Earthquake. His last three mons are Hippowdon, Exodrill, and Greninja. So I can just go for Earthquake. If Greninja ever comes in, I can switch it up and just go for the x uh, really didn't matter. So, uh, yeah. He is then going... This is plus two speed. And I calc it just to be double sure. And there's no way that a Greninja can outspeed... Uh, a plus two speed school speed with the amount of speed investment I have in it. So I know I'm going out speed. I go for the X Scissor. That's guaranteed KO. Greninja is down. The only thing left is Exadrill, and now I am at plus three speed. Um, so even with the sand rush up, 
Skullfeed is going to be able to outspeed the Exadrill. And uh, Exadrill is going to die to an Earthquake. And that is going to be the game. We get the 2-0 victory against Shroom Raver. Uh, so we have now beaten him two seasons in a row. Very, very happy about that. Um, <laughs> I think, what was the other thing? Oh, Victini stay alive. That was, that was nice. Skullpeed, uh, first game that we got it, gets three kills to sweep up the, the rest of the game. Clean up, not really a sweep, but it cleaned up the rest of Shroom's team. Um, so that was very good. The crit on Tyrantrum definitely mattered. I don't know that it, like, guaranteed he would have won that. There's still a chance that it could have burned. Um, and then since he would have been at, like, 10%, um, if, you know, it didn't, then Victini would either force him out and he'd lose his plus one speed or kill him. And then, you know, we're back to where we were before. The only issue is then I would have had to try and figure out a way to get damage on the hip out on. So that might have been uh, a little bit more tricky to do. But... You know, it's it's crazy. You never know how that game would have ended, but Shroom definitely had a better chance to win had I not crit his Tyrantrum. So that's that's the main thing to take away from this. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I don't know. I feel like I played okay. Um, this is really weird because I feel like there's been a lot of teams this season that I haven't put like a full effort into and then like I've done better. This week I, pl I like put a lot of effort into this team and I feel like it didn't work out as much as the way I wanted it to. Uh, Steelix got damaged very quickly, Reuniclus didn't quite do what it was supposed to do, Togekiss didn't really deal with Greninja the way it was supposed to do. Um, like, <laughs> I didn't really have things to do too much damage to like a Powdon or Tyrantrum, like, off the bat, so, uh, I don't know, like, the things that I brought for the roles you're supposed to fill didn't really happen, but, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, we still won, so I guess it works, but, uh, yeah, that's just kind of an interesting tidbit for this week, um, you know, I feel like I put in more work for this team than any other team this season, and, uh, I don't I feel like it didn't quite work out, but, um, yeah, so, uh, that's gonna be tough for Shroom, uh, might not be battling him next season with the way his season's going. Looking like he might be going down to Division 2. Uh, unless he can pull off some crazy wins and some other people can just, like, not win ever again. So, um, yeah, I don't know. If this is the last time that we see you in the PBL room, it's been nice. Although I do have two wins against you and two losses against you, so I don't know how I feel about that. But, I don't know. We'll get, we'll get, we'll get a rematch someday. Um, but that is going to be the game and the week, so next week I uh, should have the videos up somewhat on time, depending on when I get the battle done, um, but it won't be a week late, a week late. Uh, and so yeah, that is going to be all that, and yeah, questions, comments, blah blah blah, you know what to do, and I'll see you next week, so thanks for watching, and until the next time guys, stay sly.